This is Tom Recky, and today I'm talking about the top remedies, including the number one remedy for varicose veins. We gotta get these veins better without any procedures, and we're starting right now. So varicose veins affect about 20 plus percent of adults in America, probably even a lot more around the world, you know, that's probably underreported. But the big thing is the red. They're itchy, they're achy. These are a real, real nuisance. So surgery can help with some of these, but we came up with some great tips to hopefully avoid that. And here they are. Surgery can be pretty painful and it could have some side effects. It's not the first thing you wanna do, but it can remove a vein. Essentially they make incisions and pull out the vein and clot up the edges. That's kind of what's going on here, but I blurred it out so YouTube doesn't penalize me. But what happens otherwise is you could burn it but the thing is, it doesn't get rid of the underlying cause. You still want to watch this video and make sure you're doing a lot of these tips. And you know what? The thing about surgery is it's really not always the best option. Surgery should be the last option. I'm going to show you why, because I have so many patients go get the varicose vein surgery done and the results are not what they think. Their leg pain go doesn't go away. Their nerve pain doesn't go away. They're itching, they're burning, their swelling in their legs does not go away. The vein, the varicose vein specifically, is a symptom of this much larger problem. What happens is the surgery can remove the vein, but now that strain gets put on the remaining veins and the root causes a lot of the time are not addressed. So we're gonna be going over all the top things you can do at home, you know, and we're backing it up with all the science and the research that is successful for these things. So we're starting right now. So number one, we're gonna be talking about supplements. Supplements and vitamins. So rutoside is a antioxidant. It's an anti-inflammatory and an anti-diabetic. So a lot of the times this comes in a cream and this comes in a gel and this can come in a tablet. So this shows vascular benefits. So basically it's an anti-inflammatory and can kind of constrict down those blood vessels. So there are some studies that show that this can work really well and there are tablets that can help with that. And I've kind of linked some of those below. So take a look at these. They're actually very highly reviewed. There's a lot of pills. You know, it says in the research article, it comes in gels and creams, but I'm just seeing pills, but they are all, you know, actually have root and powder. I like to order stuff in bulk supplements like this. So uh, the powder could be pretty good, but you can see that's a great rating. So anyway, I'm gonna pull up the highest rated one. So generally it's called a rutin, not rutinoside, uh, like the chemical compound that I guess that's the short form, but you can see the reviews are fantastic. On average, uh, people basically take this for things like hemorrhoids, varicose veins, and the reviews here are outstanding. So, you know, people are like, hey, these made my hemorrhoids go away. This made my varicose veins go away, uh, you know. So there's a lot of people raving about this and giving it a good result as well as that's what the research says. So you know what, if it's, uh, that's what the science says and that's what the people say. Number two is Antella acidica. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. You know, this isn't the most common thing used, but what this is, it's a naturally occurring element that strengthens weakened blood vessels. And there are some studies that show that this happens. Studies show that this can help with venous insufficiency. So it basically squeezes down the blood vessels and can stop the blood pressure developing in those vessels. So that can kind of cool it down a little bit. So this is available in tablets, liquids, and capsules. So you can see the name is right here, Centella Asiatica is what I'm gonna call it. But the reviews are great. You know, it's not the most popular supplement in the world, but the research study is out there, you know, and I read through all the reviews here pretty much and the experience is people are absolutely raving about this for their, um, for their varicose veins, for their hemorrhoids. So make sure you check with your doctor always to make sure it doesn't interact with anything that you have. But these results are pretty encouraging based on the research data and what the reviews are saying for sure. 
grapeseed extract. Grapeseed extract has been used for centuries. Essentially, it's a flavonoid and it is a homeopathic. It is a natural occurring substance. So it contains vitamin E and flavonoids. So these things independently, and I'll talk about the flavonoids a little bit later in the diet. These are available in diets, but it is also available, you know, in pills and capsules. So research does show that grapeseed extract can help with chronic venous insufficiency for sure. So grapeseed extract, you can see there's a lot. This is a more popular supplement, but there's ones with thousands of reviews. You know, overall the reviews are excellent. And when I click on these, so I'll just click on the recommended one. You know, the reviews are pretty good. That's about as good as ratings get. So you can see right there, it has everything listed on the back where it's made. Uh, all that kind of stuff, how healthy it is, you know, they're kind of bragging about it. I always say no one really enforces that stuff anyway, but you know, there's a lot of science behind grapeseed extract. Um, you know, always check with your doctor is the recommendation prior to using these, but the results are very encouraging and the reviews are excellent. So essentially people uh, are raving about how this helps their blood pressure, helps their swelling, helps their varicose vein and helps with some pain relief. So, you know, there's some science to it for sure. So vitamins and creams can be effective. Believe it or not, there's actually some studies here. So for example, you have varicose vein creams that include a substance called Arnica, and uh, they include pills that basically include uh, horse chestnut. So horse chestnut is something that there actually is studies regarding. So, so as an example, with these pills right here, like they're called vegan capsules, you know, they're not the most expensive in the world. And what happens is they basically contain vitamin C, horse seed, horse chestnut, uh, a couple other things, you know. So believe it or not, I actually did some studies and horse chestnut, is it great studies? It's not great studies, but for swelling, it can be beneficial in decreasing the inflammation and constricting the varicose vein will it heal that vein probably won't heal it completely but this is a cheap easy probably safer thing in the studies so i'm not telling you go out and get it but the studies do show that it can work and have good results for people so the next one is this varicose vein cream so same kind of thing as i look at this it contains arnica which is a extract of a plant so same kind of thing arnica does show some use in surgery so basically in studies that did use arnica you know the relief is like 20 percent relief 40 percent relief but you know what this is not the most expensive thing in the world you know the ratings are they great they're not perfect it's four out of five you know one of probably one of the lower ones but basically they can tr um, have this extract that constricts and is an anti-inflammatory vitamin b6 aloe vera skin soothing you know, if you need something desperately, it's worth a try. So same kind of thing with this product. The same kind of ingredients we talked about are the studied ones. You can see here, uh, I see horse chestnut in here. I see, I don't think this one has Arnica, but it basically includes a lot of stuff. Are there definitive studies that this works? Not definitive, but they're not bad and the prices aren't horrible. The reviews are actually pretty good on this kind of stuff, 4.4 out of five. So there's substances that are basically anti-inflammatories and they constrict. Will they heal the vein? It won't heal it, but it can kind of stiffen it up and close it up a little bit. You know, uh, that's an option. Uh, if you have skin pain, Voltaren's always good. This is basically like taking an ibuprofen and putting it inside of a cream that kind of penetrates through the skin. These can be uh, pretty effective. You can see the ratings here are actually really, really good. And you can also combine it with one of these compression wraps. I'll talk about that later in the video, but these can be pretty effective as well. So the second thing is your diet. So there's certain things in your diet that you can eat that can help constrict your blood vessels and decrease that inflammation. And number one is fiber. So fiber can help decrease your uh, bowel strain. So that can decrease a lot of the strain in your lower extremity. It can help with varicose veins for sure. So this is found in uh, fruits, vegetables, the skins from the fruits, especially very, very effective. There's supplements, or you can get it straight from the food. So 
Fiber is very, very recommended. Um, you know, cleans out your GI tract. Um, you know, keeps your stool loose, decreases the straining, cuts down on the varicose veins. Potassium. So studies do show that a potassium deficiency can cause water retention. And a water retention can cause an increased blood pressure, increased fluid in your body, and this could help exacerbate your venous insufficiency, which leads to exacerbated varicose veins. This is in a lot of foods, yogurt, almonds, pistachios, salmon, tuna, chicken, beans, lentils, dates, oranges, squash, and flavonoids. I know I talked about this, there's some in grapeseed extract, but what flavonoids do is it can help with anti-inflammation, it can help constrict your blood vessels, so squeeze down those blood vessels, and as a result, really cool down that inflammation within varicose veins. So these help with circulation and decrease arterial blood pressure. That can be a very important thing to uh, take. So it definitely helps your overall heart function and the blood pressure through your vessels. Flavonoids are found in onion, garlic, peppers, spinach, broccoli, cocoa, grapes, and we mentioned the grapeseed extract, citrus, and blueberries. So the next thing is activities. So don't go on long walks or runs if you're suffering from varicose veins, but low impact stuff. So swimming, yoga, gentle walking, and cycling, these can do, uh, these can have really good results. And obviously that goes with eating healthy and weight loss at the same time. So important ones too are elevating your legs. Important ones too are compression socks. But the big risk factor is standing or sitting for long periods of time. So sitting for long periods of time can really lead to blood flow problems because the biggest thing that pushes blood flow through your veins besides your heart is your muscles. So with the valves, every time you're, uh, you stand on your leg, the muscles squeeze and they push the blood flow forward and it can't recoil back. So realistically, simply walking will flush all the blood flow out of your legs. So things that help in this regard are compression socks and massage uh, cuffs as well. So when I sit at a computer all day, maybe I don't get up every hour, but I have massage cuffs pushing blood flow up my calf. So if you're getting spider veins and a lot of swelling, uh, compression devices can help push blood flow up. And that's something I recommend to all my friends and people I work with, not just patients. There's different types of compression socks. So there's the knee-high ones that are over the counter. There's knee-high ones prescribed by a podiatrist like myself. So they can be 20 millimeters of mercury, 30 millimeters of mercury, or 40 millimeters of mercury or more. These ones that you buy over the counter are more like 10 millimeters to 15 millimeters of mercury. But what I would recommend is start off with over the counter stuff. The doctor stuff is hard to get and it's so tight and so uncomfortable that you can barely move and it might not necessarily be good for you unless your doctor specifically recommended it. So. As always, I include some of my favorites, some of the best rated ones, but you don't have to get anything from me. You know, um, these are not my products by any means. So you could see down here the different size. They actually do a good job showing you the different colors here, but specifically what you wanna look at is they're not that expensive. Like eight pairs for $17. Like, I mean, come on, that's like $2 per pair of socks. So it's like a dollar per sock that you can keep re-wearing. So you can kind of see, uh, these are meant to be more athletic. There's some sizing guides, but these are marketed as nursing socks. But the, what I want you to look at is 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury. This is too low of compression for insurance to cover. Most adults that have swelling problems will not be able to get on the 20 to 30 or 40 millimeter compression socks. These are so tight that nobody wears them. In my experience, everybody tries to buy them, but maybe like 2% of people actually wear them. Get something that's low cost. So for like, you know, a, a dollar per pair here, uh, that's lower compression. If you find that it's not enough compression for you, then get something heavier. Don't goof around starting with like the 40 millimeter mercury, trying to get insurance to cover it because you're gonna jump through a lot of hoops, you're gonna waste a lot of time, and it's gonna cut into your skin and you're gonna hate it if you're like 98% of the patients I see. Start with something low cost and lower compression, see how it works, see how it fits into your routine, and then go up to the higher compression. 
at the same time, take a look right here, the 20 to 30 millimeter mercury are like $15. Why would you waste time driving to like different uh, outlets, wasting gas, especially the price it is, trying to uh, exchange prescriptions from your doctor to the medical supply company to get something like this when it's so cheap online? It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And realistically, you should go with the lower compression. This for the average person is probably a little bit too high and doesn't provide a ton of benefit. It'll cut into your skin and hurt you more than it will benefit you. So start with the lower compression rather than the high compression. Down in the show notes, I include my favorites. And the beauty is this is a short little guide that kind of focused on the herbal remedies uh, and the diet. But the reality is check out our guide before. I talked for like 30 minutes about surgeries, exercise, injections, treatments, all the different tests that I would do as a podiatrist and your vein doctor would do. So check that out if this still is not solving your problems. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us. So thank you. We have guides for everything. Keep watching. We appreciate you and good luck.